But what, so what, yeah. um, this is this is such an, uh, a such a lovely group of people that we've collected here tonight uh, on the eve of a, of one of the most seminal elections uh, of our lifetimes. Um, we have Dr. Barbara Ballier uh, in in Kansas, and we have um, Michelle uh, de la Isla also in Kansas, and we have Eric Kripke, who is just a Kansas wannabe. I know, um, and, <laughs> and, and <laughs> as as am I. I I I have been uh, portraying a character on uh, Supernatural, Castiel, who was blown up by by God in Kansas. True, so that's true, my, true. That's my my connection. Um, but I actually, it's it's funny because I, I I did I wanted to I wanted Eric to be a part of this conversation because he created these characters of Sam and Dean on Supernatural who are from Kansas, and and um and recently Eric you you tweeted that Sam and Dean would vote for Joe Biden. Absolutely, they would vote. Uh, they would vote blue down the ticket. Um, and I, and I, I actually thought it might be interesting if you don't mind uh, uh, indulging me for a second and 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 asking Eric just to um, um, <laughs> explore that a little bit um, because it, it's a, it's an interesting moment and an interesting confluence here because um, uh, aspiring Senator Bollier, uh, you you have. Um, You've talked about the fact that you're a Second Amendment support. You you support Second Amendment rights. You yes. were a, a Republican. You served uh, in office as a Republican. You have you have switched party allegiance, and you are now running as a Democrat. Um, but I but I think a lot of people in Kansas are are sort of di dyed in the wool Republicans uh, who who feel like they're, they 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 can't cross that party line, but. But I think a lot of people on on the face of it would say the same thing about Sam and Dean. Like they kind of look like good old boys. They, they've got guns in the trunk of their car. Um, but why would you say that they would support uh, a blue ticket? Um, uh, well, I mean, let me give you like just a, a one minute answer, which is I'm, I'm from Ohio. I'm from Toledo, Ohio. And so I'm from the Midwest and, and you know, these are my people and uh, I'm not from Los Angeles or New York or the coasts. I'm from, you know, what they call the flyover states. And if I had a nickel for any time anyone told me like, oh yeah, I drove through Toledo once. And, but all of these things are really important to me. Um, and so when I made Supernatural, I wanted to really make it a Midwestern um, and have, you know, picked Lawrence, Kansas, uh, probably because of Stull Cemetery, which is like an awesome urban legend outside of Lawrence for anyone who's from there who's watching. Um, but to me, it's like the values of the Midwest are really important to me, like super important. Like I feel them in my bones. When people ask me who I am, I say I'm an Ohioan. And, and so that to me is about, there's just, I'm, you know, I'm a moderate guy, uh, but it's about family and it's about common sense and being down to earth and treating people with respect and not intentionally trying to create divisiveness and drama and chaos. Like it's embarrassing to me as a Midwesterner that, that you, all that craziness and you, you just like, no, you take care of your neighbor and you speak rationally and calmly. And, and to me, that's what the Midwest signifies. Um, and why, and I think what, you know, Joe signifies, I think what the ladies on this call signify, it's just, and I just, I don't see that on the other side. Um, and so that is why to me, Sam and Dean would be, uh, would be voting Democrat this, this election cycle. Um, I, I think it's, it's an interesting m moment also where ca character is so much a part of what's on the ballot right now. Um, and I, I see that in in your Senate race, um, Doctor, where, where you're, um, you're up against a, uh, an opponent who is just twisting your words um, and, and lying in order to, I mean, I've seen several clips where he's just, he's clearly like taking the things that you're saying out of, totally out of context, chopping oh. sentences up 
and and putting them together to make uh, to make his 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 argument. Um, but you are, uh, you know, he's somebody who is essentially denying that there is a pandemic happening right now. And you as a doctor, uh, that, that's gotta be so hard to go up against because you, you've you taken this oath, first do no harm. You're, you're, you, you've devoted your life to the well-being of people. And yet you're, you're running against someone who obviously doesn't actually care about the well-being of the people of Kansas and, uh, and has actually, you know, been charged with assaulting, convicted, convicted with assaulting somebody, uh, and yet he's still running on on the Republican ticket right now. Can you speak to that at all? I just want to say, Kansans deserve better. The nation deserves better. And in my lifetime, what I found it is so easy to be good and kind compared to mean and ugly and lying. And I, it has been um, truly stunning, <laughs> let alone to see a physician who doesn't want people to have health care and in the middle of a pandemic won't wear a mask, a face mask. I know he did it in the OR, but now, <laughs> says, you know, this, this, this isn't, I have to do what the people want. Well, leaders need to lead. Doctors should follow science. We as a nation for, should vote for honesty and integrity and people who want to come and work together instead of divide. And I, I truly have been stunned and uh, saddened by uh, what, you know, our government should be something we're proud of and the people in it. I can look right next to me, Michelle De La Isla, as mayor of Topeka and a woman who is ready to serve in the Congress as well. We, we wanna do good and serve and listen and make a difference. And it doesn't matter what party you're in, it's what, get your people that we wanna help you. So yeah, it's time to get some Democrats elected in Kansas. <laughs> Can you can you speak briefly to why uh, why you made that decision? It must have been a difficult decision as a as a longtime Republican and you elected know, Republican to switch allegiance. Misha, it was a really interesting change over time. Um, I grew up a moderate Republican. Kansas, we still have those. Uh, they're you know dying out, shall we say, because uh, it's not working. But um, Nancy Landon Kassebaum, the first woman senator to be elected in her own right, other than a husband being in the Senate, to the U.S. Senate, came from Kansas. And when she was in office, she was about person over party and about working across party lines. And she's been my role model, mentor all my life. And uh, that's just what I thought you did as a Republican. And I've been in groups around the country that are bipartisan groups and people always have gone like, wow, I've never met a Republican like you who mm. listens and wants to work on things. And I just thought that's what they all did. But over time, leadership just was not helping. We wouldn't, they wouldn't fund public education in our state. They had a terrible, our governor, Sam Brownback had this terrible tax experiment that was copied by Trump's people. I mean, it's the same, give the cuts to the wealthy, big, small um, corporate businesses. And it just, we've had a lot of mess and wouldn't expand Medicaid by choice of the Republicans again. And it was time I endorsed our governor, Laura Kelly across party lines because it was the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, my leadership got pretty mad. <laughs> Oh, well, I did the right thing. The people agreed and I changed parties and I have always been about equality. I've always been about women in a private physician patient relationship. I've always been about uh, local control and fiscal responsibility and the people and that now is the Democratic Party. And I'm a proud member of it. Well, thank you for for, for, for being brave enough to step out like that, because I think that these party allegiances so often become so codified uh, that people feel like they're unable to cross those lines. 
And it is hard. It's, 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 it's a cultural thing, Misha. But it is a cultural it, thing. Yeah. You got you to gotta realize when it isn't working and, and grow and move on. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I am so pleased to see people in this nation speaking up. I mean, look at the voter turnout. You know, rah, America, let's get this going and, and get our voices heard. It's time. Yeah, I think it's an exciting moment because I think all across the country, we're seeing that that partisan dis, uh, divide dissolving a little bit. Yes. People are, I mean, of course, people are are very fractured right now and there's a, there is a lot of contention between the parties, but a lot of people are starting to see, wait a minute, the party that I've aligned myself with all these years is no longer serving America. And I want, I want to go with true patriotism. I want to go with what is actually in the best interest of the people in my state. And a lot of times that means choosing a candidate from a different party. So you're, you, you are on the cusp of, of potentially being, you're in, an, in a dead heat race right now. Yes. And you, if, uh, if elected Senate, I believe you're gonna be the, the first Democratic Senator since the 1930s in Kansas. Yeah, 1932. <laughs> And wow. I would be the first woman physician ever elected to the U.S. Senate. Ever? And first first ever. ever? Ever. What? That's ever. ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That, I'm, that I'm, needs I'm, to be fixed tomorrow. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right, Kansas, we're, fix we're that. We're going to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. I so, know. Um, Michelle, why why are you why why did why did you decide to run for how a house seat? You're you've been uh, mayor of Topeka for uh, three years now, mm -hmm. and um, and you, as as we started talking about before we uh, started this this Zoom, you're also in the middle of a remodel. It feels like too much work. <laughs> um, why 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 have you decided to run for a house seat? Uh, I, I had a temporary lapse in judgment. Just kidding. Uh, so the, I think that anybody that decides to run for higher office actually does have some sort of temporary lapse in judgment. And I think that it comes from a place in your heart of, of trying to do something good. And for me, I think that the tipping point was as mayor, I started doing things that most mayors didn't do, like visiting back the neighborhoods after I got elected, not because I wanted their vote, but because we would just go bring hot dogs and chili and sit down and have conversations with people about what their needs were. And in Topeka, we were very fortunate that we brought our community together. We started doing a lot of things to uh, move forward inclusive prosperity. We started talking about how do we start lifting every boat, not just the corporate boats that need to rise, but also the people that are in need so that businesses had good employees and our communities were a better place. And as we were talking about all those things, what I started learning was very quickly, the story that I had lived through was the same story that people that I was interacting with were going through. Um, I've been homeless, I'm a single parent, um, and I am a cancer survivor, and I will never forget having to go to the mailbox and figure out what the hell the mailbox was going to bring for me this week, because it was more than likely bills. Uh, so much so that I have gone online bill pay so that I don't have to see another envelope in my inbox, uh, in my mailbox. And, um, and the families that I was talking to were talking to me about the same challenges. Like, you know, I can't get health care and I don't, I'm, put, I'm postponing this treatment or I'm postponing taking this medication because I just can't afford it and I cannot stop paying the house. Or right now the pandemic is happening and there's so many kids that don't even have access to internet. Um, there's rural communities, our farmers. Kansas is driven in, by and large by the farming community. Um, we are a huge uh, cattle exporter. We're number three in the world. We are, our top export is between corn and then after, I mean, wheat. And then after wheat, we also export a lot of corn and we also have soy here in my district. And all of that was suffering because of decisions that happened at the federal level. So as a mayor, there were things that I just could not say, I got your back, I could help you with this. And when the, I, I was approached and I was in a very good job, plus being mayor, and it was not something that I needed to do because my life was pretty good. Um, I love my place, I love my community. I was doing things that I felt more meaningful. The reality is that I wasn't doing enough. 
And um, I had a conversation with my girls and we decided that, you know, it was time. It was time for us to do something. This is probably going to be one of the biggest things I'll ever do in my life. It's a lot of sacrifice, but it's worth it. Um, the people of America are worth it. The people in my district are worth it. And gosh darn it, they do deserve a lot better than what they're getting. Um, we deserve people that believe in science. We deserve people that believe in kindness, that integrity still matters. And that being in political office is not about a power title. It's about servant, uh, servanthood and, and taking care of others. So we'll see. I'm hoping that Barbara and I have had two very clean campaigns. I have nothing but love and respect for Barbara. Um, she has been just phenomenal. Um, and our campaigns have everybody that comments talks about how we have restored hope in people's hearts with regards to public servants. So, you know, we've already done that, Barbara. So let's make history yes, tomorrow. <laughs> yes. We're ready. Make history. Is there anything, Please. you know, we're, we're, we're supporting you uh, as Americans and also as people who have fictional ties to your amazing <laughs> state. Very um, much so, very much but, so. Yeah. <laughs> but Eric, is there anything, is I, I there have anything? an idea for Eric. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's hear it. So is there any, what, what, what? They say that life mimics art and art mimics life. So why don't we start creating characters that are actually kind and compassionate, that are in leadership, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, no, one will, no one will watch that. That's not, yeah. that's not <laughs> going to be an attraction. It, it'll get canceled in two days, but it's- I know, I know. Idea. I'm just being and a smart should, aleck. <laughs> we should totally do it. Is there um, anything that people um, outside of Kansas can do to rally voters in Kansas? What can what can we do in this last, uh, not, e yeah, we have 24 hours left. What can we do? Post, text, call, write, pray, all those things. You know, the reality is, you know, Kevin Bacon always says seven degrees of separation. That's his old story. Well, in Kansas, it's two. And uh -huh. I have found no matter where, who I'm with, anywhere, practically in the world, somebody knows somebody that's from Kansas. So put it up on your own uh, post sites, uh, tweet and text and Twitter, uh, use Twitter, use Facebook, whatever it is you use, and talk about our races and, and say why you would support women like us, us, and someone will see it and go, oh, maybe I haven't voted yet. I know that, you know, it, it, it's, I tell people they have the stone, throw it in, make the waves, ripple effect, make it happen. People can still donate. My goodness, they can, yeah. right? It's, it's amazing to think, but even just keeping ads on, keeping ads on the air on TV for just another few hours uh, can make a difference. So uh, if you're watching this, we'll post up the, the links uh, so where you can donate. Call any friends that you have who are in Kansas um, and make sure that they're voting. Um, and if you want a phone bank, if you're a Supernatural fan and you want any, and, and you want to fight for, for Team Sam and Dean, um, just get on the horn. But text mm -hmm. and tweet. And thank you both for your service and your enthusiasm and for, for, your, for your generous and genuine hearts. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for making time for us. We're so grateful. And Absolutely. And when you want to come to Kansas, we're ready for you. Oh, okay. We will I will tell you, that. you know, both Michelle and I have been traveling all over, but it is one beautiful state. And oh, God, everybody yes. thinks it's flat and it's not. It has some of the most beautiful hill country that you'll ever see. And they are spectacular sunsets. Even people on my team have people who are moving here now. They've loved it so much. And there you go. So, All right, I like that, I like that last, last pitch for Kansas. Move to Kansas, everyone. Move to Kansas and then you can register to vote in Kansas. Yes. <laughs> right, exactly. All We're right. Nice people, have a great night. And of you course, too. everybody stay safe and be well. And I don't have my vote mask here, but you know, it matters. Leave yes. this, please. Let's take care of one another. Good Thank night. You. Thanks Bye. all. Good night. Michelle. Thank you guys. Bye. Tomorrow. Yeah, go get them. Yes. Go get them. Good night. Thank you.